Welcome to Dub Nation, the official show of the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby. I'm Jerem Jordan alongside Banksy. And boy, for September 14th, Banksy, we sure have a lot to talk about today. <laughs> Rack stacked and packed, baby. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, when we were setting this show up, uh, you know, the last couple of days, it was like, okay, we just have a uh, Crossroads Cup, right? Nope. Nope. Signings, trades. It's, uh, it's going crazy. Okay, here's what's on the show, uh, which, by the way, we're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Subscribe to the uh, podcast version. Here's what we got, baby. Mikey Teo traded San Diego. We'll break it down. Who did the Warriors get and what did the Warriors get in return? Lance Williams re-signed. Let's go. Joel Hodgson signed. We'll chat with Joel. The Crossroads Cup. What's that? The most unique pathway of any team in Major League Rugby gets even more unique. We'll explain what it is. And chat with Sayo Hila, the competition chairman, about it. Plus, Ian Gibbons is hired. New High performance director, we'll talk about that. Plus, the Rugby World Cup in sevens happened. How did the USA do and what did we think about it? But first, let's weigh in with Mikey Teo getting traded to San Diego. The two-year uh, warrior, the player of the year in Major League Rugby in 2021, traded to San Diego back where he played before for cap space. And Jonah Deaton-Berger, who was the fifth pick in the draft in 21, who's a 23-year-old. Lock, 6'6", 220 from Wisconsin, played at Lindenwood. What's your reaction to the big trade and the big news in Major League Rugby? I mean, obviously a trade of this magnitude is going to rattle some cages, right? Everybody's going to have their opinions on it. I see this for the Utah Warriors as really looking forward. Mikey Teo is an absolute quality player. You can't take anything away from the caliber and the performances that he put on in the red and black here for Dub Nation. But looking forward to where this team is building and what we have already under contract I think this was a great get. We had a giant hole at second row that needed to be filled. So you get a quality lock that's young, that's mobile, that has height. This is a guy that's a great target in the line out. He brings that layer of physicality to the type five that the Warriors desperately need in this offseason. And you get some considerations there financially. So we got a lot of value out of the trade. Mikey goes to a place that he loves, where he's wanted to go back to. He misses family. He wants to be close in California. So I really think this is a positive situation for everybody involved. What a 2021 season uh, Mikey Teo had in, uh, in route to the playoffs. The offense was second in the, in the league. It was so fun to watch that. Last year certainly wasn't the same as 21 for the team. And there were a couple of games there, Banksy, where Mikey Teo came off the bench. Uh, and Connor Burns, uh, a rookie, started. So... There were, there were a few indications that perhaps, you know, it, was, it wasn't it was working like they were hoping last year. But hard to ignore, like you said, the impact that Mikey Teo has on a, on a match. And uh, certainly he'll be missed as a Utah Warrior. Best of luck to Mikey. He's, he's so unique physically because he's extremely quick and fast. He doesn't look it because he looks like a prop. But he is so fast and quick and deceptive. He's got that step. You can't tackle him straight up or backwards. He's always getting a, a, a meter or two or three. Good sense of how to play the ball. He could play fullback, wing. He'd come up and play scrum half sometimes. Certainly, uh, Mikey Teo will be missed. A tremendous player. One of the, uh, in the young history of the Utah Warriors, one of the best players uh, the Warriors have ever had. Absolutely. Quality in class. And, you know, we always say once a warrior, always a warrior. So you've always got a home here in Utah, Mikey. Come back and see us anytime, brother. Okay, talk to me about, uh, and as you mentioned, filling that that space at lock. This was certainly a position that the Utah Warriors needed to fill last year. Felt confident in Jamie Lane. He gets hurt early. Now Jonah Dietenberger uh, fills in at, at competing for that other starting spot with Jamie Lane. They call him Tree, which is a fun nickname when you're lock. Certainly there will be other players as well competing for that second spot and and maybe even other signings. That is a, a, a position to address this offseason, we'd imagine. If there was one spot out of the starting 15 that you could put your finger on and say, we need help here, it's that loose head side lock, right? Tree plays a lot on the tight head side. Uh, really, you could just say second row in general because they're kind of interchangeable when you're locking in, in that position. You know, it's only recently that people have started to define tight head lock versus loose head lock. There really isn't much difference in the way that you play the game there. So just a second rower was desperately needed of quality obviously we drafted Janowick and he's gonna be great but he needs time to develop with with this new signing we get a guy that's had MLR minutes that's been in training camps that's played behind some impressive second rowers 
uh, there in San Diego that's played alongside guys like Ben Mitchell and the quality of player that he's been for a lot of years. So this is a guy with a lot of experience now and hopefully developing, even as a young player, physically, I think when he gets into this Utah Warriors team and this strength and conditioning program that we have here, you're going to see a guy really blossom into the best uh, – set or not – not the best sevens. He comes from a sevens program, but the best second rower and the best rugby player that he can be. A couple extra notes here. So uh, we mentioned that Jonah Dietenberger is from Lindenwood. That now makes four guys on the roster from the Lindenwood Lions out of St. Charles, Missouri, a just rising program who's doing great work, uh, as mentioned, sevens and fifteens, men and women's. So Connor Burns, Sam Buckley, Gabe Kettering, two of those draft picks. Connor Burns draft pick last year, and now Jonah Dietenberger. So basically, the Lindenwood Lions campus is moving to Harriman, Utah, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> William James Becker weighs in on Facebook watching. What's up? Just don't trade Koa. As of now, Koa is still rostered <laughs> with Utah. But I know there are negoti- negotiations underway. Um, Brandon Sparks probably looking to get as much value as he can out there. <laughs> it's really just tough for Sparksy to, to get anything he's looking for. I mean, really a bag of Funyuns and a Diet Coke, I think, might do the deal. But Koa's part of the furniture here, y'all. He ain't going nowhere. There's nobody who loves Koa more than general manager Brandon Sparks. Okay, Mikey Teo traded Jonah Dietenberger coming in. The other big news, uh, and there's a lot. Uh, let's get to item number two here. Lance Williams returns. To the Utah Warriors, former Hawaii linebacker, ninth player in MLR with 50 caps, second in Warriors history with uh, 13 tries in those caps, and he was the only player. First team all MLR, big time signing because guess what? Lance Williams is playing the best rugby of his life right now. Yeah, this is really just a, a, a meeting of the moment when the player and the team are both ready. Lance is an absolutely fantastic guy to have, not just in the locker room, but in the field. He's a leader, scored what I think was probably one of the tries of the year where he was dragged in from 15 meters out. This I, is this the no, nope, this isn't the try. This is the replay of this uh, of this mall here where he takes it off the back and drives it in. But the the driving mall from the line out. When they were like 30 meters out and Lance gets dragged on his knees by Gus and Pauly Muller, or not by Gus and Franco Vandenberg, about seven meters, and then he regains his feet. One of the most impressive things physically that I've ever seen, and just a great guy to have around in your organization. Everybody in the stands has a Lance Williams story. A great guy to have in the community. Really happy to have him re-sign to the Warriors. Yeah, great for the culture, great for the community. Uh, prior to going full-time rugby he was a special needs preschool teacher i mean dude has a big heart um and so great to have him so he signed a multi-year deal by the way that gives him a good chance to try and make the world cup roster assuming the u.s makes it we all hope for that um and so lance williams uh wants to be he wants to play for the united states and he's got a shot um he was he was in uh camp not with uh, the u.s uh senior team but with the falcons kind of the b team over the summer a little bit. So he's got a chance. Like if he keeps playing like this, I wouldn't be shocked if he uh, makes that team. You know, and it's really the the goal there. He has eligibility opportunities with, uh, with another Island country as well, but obviously setting his sights here on playing for the USA and being an Eagle. I think that's really what he wants at his, at his core. Okay. Julie Winder weighs in big fan of the Warriors. Watches the program. What's up, Julie? Lance is amazing. Yes. And I don't even know if you're talking about as a player or a person, but it is both. Uh, he checks all the boxes, guys. He really does. And he's got that, you know, dyed, uh, bleached, bleached hair, you know, just whatever, whatever, whatever it is. I don't know if it is it the tips that have grown out. Does he do that on purpose? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever it is, know. it's majestical and I love it. And it's all it's I know is he's probably eating a ton of treasure. Care. So, yeah, it's all good. Okay. Uh, Joel Hodgson is signed. Item three of many. Uh, 30-year-old fly half and fullback, multi-year contract. He's been a pro for a long time. Hunt 110 games played in the Premiership in England for Newcastle, Northampton, a couple of those, most recently with uh, Glasgow and Scotland. This dude scored 467 points. This is an experienced dude who can really bring a lot to the Utah Warriors, and you really like what you've got with he and Cliven Lipser at 10. I Just tons of experience, international guys. 
I really think Joel obviously is going to be your number one starting fly half going in with a guy with this much experience and his ability to play the style and brand of rugby that the Utah Warriors want to play. Even being a Northern Hemisphere guy, he loves to run with the ball in hand to put players in the right position. He's got the experience to use his boot tactically and the skill to put this forward pack in a position to do what they do best, and that's dominate. An exciting player and an incredibly nice human being as well. Which you spoke with them earlier today. We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, Julie Winder said both, as with in reference to Lance Williams, and then Jape uh, Gilstrap on Facebook. Lance is a stud. He knows my son by name. Like you said, he's very personable. So good to have Lance. And now Joel Hodgson. And I'm uh, intrigued to get to know Joel as well because – Little did we know, Banksy, you kind of snuck him in behind the scenes. I knew. The, uh, I was there. I seen it. I didn't know. You didn't tell me. Uh, <laughs> Joel was there at the draft party. So Sworn was- to secrecy when uh, I was introduced to him from Brandon Sparks, and he just kind of hung off to the side. He and his partner were both there and uh, absolutely right. lovely human beings. It was great to kind of just make the introduction. He's so excited to be a Utah Warrior and excited to play here in America and all the wealth of experience that he brings with him. This is going to be great for Dub Nation. And I'm excited to get to know him like you, Dub Nation. Let's hear uh, Banksy's conversation from earlier today. Let's play a game now called Where in the World is Joel Hodgson? Where are you, bud? (laughs) (laughs) The long answer or the short answer? Give us the Reader's Digest short and condensed version. Perfect. I, uh, I'm currently visiting my wife's family in Northampton, which is the Midlands of uh, the UK. So when can we expect to see you back here in Utah? We kind of did a little stealth mission on draft day. We did, and people yeah. didn't realize you were in the room on draft day. So we got to kind of talk a bit there and got to meet. When are you back in the States? Well, if I, I didn't realize, Banksy, how much of a, a, a superstar you were over there. So I wouldn't have actually <laughs> spoke to you because everyone was looking our direction. Um, but no, uh, actually, pretty pretty soon, you know, um, J- Jess and I, we haven't, obviously, I've done a little stint with Glasgow just to keep fit, you know, and run some, run some lengths as, as you do. And uh, we had a lot, a fair bit of downtime before the boys actually get their heads together. Uh, for preseason, and we thought, you know, what, why wait? Let's get out there. Let's experience what what Utah is all about. So we're actually in transit now. We uh, we've drove down to Northampton to say goodbye to her family, so, said goodbye to my family today, and then as of tomorrow, we'll be traveling uh, traveling to the US uh, via New York. Uh, we're going to pick up a car in New York, and you know, see 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 the beautiful country that is the United States of America for about five to six days, and then uh, hopefully touch down in in Salt Lake City towards the end of September, if not the start of October. So so it's pretty pretty close, which I'm I'm really excited about. Buckle up, dude, because you know you can drive from London to the Midlands in a couple of hours, and from the Midlands to the North in a couple of hours. You could be in the car for six hours here in America and still be in the same state, bro. It's very it's very true, and. Uh, my my wife kindly uh, decided to change her driving license at the last minute, so she actually is still waiting for hers to be posted. So it's oh, no. me in the hot seat for the whole way, which, uh, <laughs> which is brilliant. Which is brilliant. So talk about your rugby story a little bit and what people can expect from you. Obviously, uh, a great playmaking ten. You love to run with the ball in hand. You've got a great kind of classic north uh, north hemisphere schooling with your ability to use the boot and kick tactically, which fits right in with what the Warriors want to do here. Tell us a little bit about, you know, where you started and where you're from and uh, and what we can look forward to in, in your rugby career. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, exactly that. You know, I um, when I started my rugby career, um, rugby was going through a, a sort of a, a, trans, a transition as it were, you know, I, I started when um, uh, trying to be as skillful as you possibly could be, you know, express yourself, play what's in front of you, all, all that sort of stuff. And then we we saw went into Northern Hemisphere, we went into a sort of, you know, a lot of it was down to game control, uh, size really mattered, uh, especially in the forward pack. So for myself, it was a lot more kicking and, and sort of putting putting your pack in the, in the right areas. So, um, yeah, I went through a bit of a transition and, and then it, you've seen rugby sort of, you know, with with the Marcus Smiths and the people of the, the, the those those sorts of guys that starting to throw the ball around a bit more and seeing what Quins do. So, I've done like a full circle. So yeah, so 
you know, a bit, bit longer in the tooth than I was on, on the, that photo that they released the other day. So I don't know if I'll be, be running it in from, from, from 80 meters. Not that I ever did, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, just, you know, just, just enjoy myself. I've had a good chat with a few of the guys when I, when I was over in Salt Lake last, last, last month and spoke to, to Greg and, you know what's really exciting for me is the brand of rugby that that the Utah Warriors want to try and try and show the fans. You know, it's 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 not a case of you know we're just going to play for the sake of playing. Yeah, it's going to be a smart, calculated game plan, but it's it's there to entertain the fans and hopefully score tries. So, where I hopefully fit in that is, is the ability to 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 link our our dominant forward carriers and and our exciting backs together and and move that ball around and. And you know, if if for whatever reason the defense is decided to tackle us on it on a weekend, you know, I might might put my my laces on it and put it down the field, and then we can get down the, the field that way. So, so that's uh, that's what I hopefully intend to bring to to, to Utah Warriors, and, and 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 if I can do that, I'll I'll, I'll hopefully do 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 the fans some some proud. So we basically played all last year without a proper 10. Caleb Mockany did an incredible job filling in in that position, but he's really more of a true 15. I think this kind of sets us up for what's become very cool right now in international rugby, right? This dual playmaker role. You know, have you had a chance to talk with Caleb or any of the other fullbacks or guys about, about what that might look like or what Coops has said that uh, that you might be able to look forward to? I, I unfortunately, unfortunately, I didn't didn't get to speak to Caleb last 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 month. But uh, I, I saw I saw what he was doing for 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 the team last last year. And and as you say, it's for someone who is naturally a fullback to step in so naturally to ten is is something quite special. You know, he uh, he showed he showed a unique skill set and, and he showed a great game understanding. And I think that's one of the the, the nice things from a fullback coming into a fly ass position is. You actually get to see a lot more of the picture for a lot longer, and I think it really helped him with with what he did uh, towards the end of last season. Um, yeah, as you say, multi multi positions is is a, is a new thing. You know, you'll see a lot of coaches go go for a six two split on the bench these days. You know, get as many forwards out there as you possibly can because at the end of the day, the the work and 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 the the grunt and the effort that those guys put in it, you do need a lot of boys so you can keep keep the fresh and keep keep competing for 80 minutes so you will find fly offs that, that can play full back you'll find inside centers that can step into 10 if needs be um i i've been quite lucky in my career i've i've, I've played predominantly fly off but I've also represented Northampton Saints at scrum off and and i've played a bit of full back as well so i've had a i've had a go at a few positions um you know, I don't know if that's a, a positive or a negative. Either I'm not very good at all three, or you know, I, I can do can can to try my hand at a couple of things. So yeah, as you say, it, it is important in the in in the modern game because, unfortunately, the game's getting tougher and tougher, and collisions are getting bigger and bigger. And and, and unfortunately, guys can't can't go play in 20, 20 games a season. So if you can have a couple of uh, positions to your bow. You're gonna get more game time. You're gonna get more reps at edit in there. Yeah, so it's it, it it is it's just part of the game now. To your credit, Joel, I was never any good at any one position. At least you're <laughs> a properly good fly half that can do the others functionally. I was never even a good prop, and that was my job. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> So I think Tre Tre Trevor Leo would suggest otherwise. Big ah, man. that's my Uso right there. Um, <laughs> so why America and why now? At 30 years old as a fly half, you're really just coming into your own, really, as a player with your experience and the IQ and the rugby. Why America now? Um, well, there's, there's, there's two parts to that answer. Uh, I think America was always was always something that excited me you know uh the way the way america does sports never mind rugby does any kind of sport you guys just nail it from a from an entertainment point of view from a, a game day experience it was something i was i was desperate to be a part of um the reason so in my, in my head long term you know when you try and plan things and Obviously, the best plans normally go out the window. I did kind of see myself experiencing a different culture somewhere overseas, and that my preferred destination was the States. Um, why now? I think, well, there's been obviously a lot of stuff in the media recently with with, with regards to Premiership Rugby. Um, COVID really rocked the sport. Um, you know, funding's gone down. 
gate receipts weren't a thing for a good season and a half. You know, all those things. Relegation got stopped. Um, and I think I found myself, uh, certainly someone in my position who's never quite reached international honours, but it's sort of been a, you know, that middle guy that's it's always been there or thereabouts playing playing in, in, in the Prem. I, I found people in my position, in terms of my situation, were... Um, will find themselves without without a club. You know, I think we saw a record high of, of about 86 guys who have been released. And they, they weren't young lads and they weren't internationals. They were the middlemen. So that's probably why America's come a bit sooner. But, you know, MLR's grown year in, year out. Crowds are up. Like, more teams are joining. You've got the World Cup in, is it 2031, 32? Yeah, both the men yeah. and women. Yep. Both those, that season. You know, everything's building towards that. And I thought if there was ever a time to get on on this journey, why not now, you know? And then and, and I was luckily enough, Utah and, and Brandon came in and we had a great discussion. And after I had a chat and assessed what, where I was in my career, what I'd done, what I wanted to do, you know, I, and, and spoke to my wife, um, it was it was a no brainer. I, I, I can't tell you, I might not look it on my face, but I am super excited to get out there experience what Utah is about, experience what the MLR is about and just just give it a good go and and, and stay along and, and join in on the ride for as long as I possibly can, you know, because definitely I think the MLR is going places, you know, I think you'll see that league grow and grow and grow and then I'd love to be able to, to be sitting in the stands when it's World Cup in the, in the United States of America thinking that hopefully I, had, I was part of the journey and, and helped grow the sport as best I could and and made it a, a phenomenon like like a, a baseball or American football or a basketball. And, and I know that's big aspirations, but I don't see why rugby can't can't get up to that standard and of that level of popularity in in the in the country. Well, you're coming to the right place. Seven out of the ten most attended games in MLR last year, Zions Bank Stadium for the Utah Warriors. So Dub Nation shows up for our boys. We absolutely love our rugby. Enjoy the time with your family. I know we've got you set in the car in the sun, so you're probably sweating a bit there. Uh, go, go be with Jen and uh, and with the family, and we can't wait to see you here soon, brother. Thank you so much for taking part of your time to talk to Dub Nation, guys. Cheers, Banksy. Thanks for your time, mate. Joel Hodgson, new Utah Warriors fly half. Fun conversation there, Banksy. Um, so he's hanging out in the Midlands, and he uh, he feels like you're an American superstar, which is great. I don't. I feel the same way. Um, and then moving to Utah at the end of the month, it's going to take some time, visit, yeah. Um, long in the tooth, he said, not running in from 80 meters. That's okay. You got, you got I, I didn't I didn't want to let him know that the older you get, the longer those runs get in the stories you tell at the pub afterwards. <laughs> you know, like that 10-meter that exactly. pick and go from the from the back of the scrum turns into a 90-meter run by the time you get to my age, Joel. It is that man long, run. right? And uh, maybe it's <laughs> uphill but... both ways in the snow. But you gotta love the experience. I mean, over a hundred games played in the uh, Premiership. There, mm. he's been in, Man, he's been in some real dogfights. A fantastic wealth of experience coming from a guy that's just played that much rugby at a top level to come to Utah at this point in his career is really, I think, a credit to where the league is growing and where rugby in America is growing. And how about the great technology that he can be sitting in his car in the English Midlands and we can have a conversation here for Dub Nation. It's beautiful. We've interviewed people all over the world on this show now, which is pretty cool, which is pretty awesome. So Joel Hodgson, newest Utah Warriors fly half. And as, yeah, as you mentioned, we've got uh, Caleb Mockney and Cliven Lopes. There's some really talent. That's a really talented group of that position that you can uh, mix and match where you need. So that's great. Okay. Next item, which was going originally uh, to be the main thing we we're going to talk about here, Banksy, the Crossroads Cup. It gets buried a little bit here, but this is awesome. Um, the widest and most direct entry point into the Utah Warriors pathway and MLR roster. Warriors are using this competition as a way to identify prospective players who might be selected to join either the Utah Warriors roster or the Utah Selects, who will compete in the spring this time The same at the same time as the Utah Warriors. So this is going to be a month-long all-star cycle competition, October 29th through November 19th, as you can see. That's going to focus on player, coach, and referee development in this area, Utah, Southern Idaho. This is really cool. And again, another unique step for the Utah Warriors in the attempt to become the epicenter of rugby in North America. I think it's a fantastic move to set up a specific 
competition to identify these guys. And it's not just for the players. This is also for coaches and referee development to see who's in that pipeline in rugby here in Utah as the epicenter of the sport nationwide. So now you obviously have the academy kids that were identified at the high school level. We have maybe those club players or those college players that have found the game now that can come through the Crossroads Cup, all leading to the selects. And then hopefully for a lot of these guys, a major league contract with the Utah Warriors, a la so many guys like James Bifale, who thank, who sadly just left the team. We wish him all the best in, in, with his new club. Guys like Joe Mano, guys like Lance Williams, guys like our very own Saya Uhila, who came through playing at the club level here. Our roster is full of local talent, and this is the next layer to recognizing and identifying the next generation. It's awesome. So you got the Crossroads Cup. You got the Utah Warriors Academy. We have a North and a South now in Utah, which is awesome. They played a couple months ago. Then you can get to the Selects, and now that Select season is going to be the same time as the MLR team. So that's that's great. You're getting, you're in shape. You're ready to go. You're uh, you're with the B squad, if you will. And and there will be guys that the Warriors need to pull up, and they make the 23, and they participate, and maybe they're stars. Maybe they're uh, Tomasi Tonga, and they're the young local kid who gets You know what I mean? I'm very excited about this. Also, the draft picks. Don't forget, the Warriors had five picks. Like, these guys can at least be going on the selects, if not in the 23. So this is going to be awesome, man. This is going to be great. A very exciting competition and another layer of commitment to local rugby development here in the state of Utah. It's going to be great. And, uh, again, that begins – about five six weeks from now and we should tell you the name of the four teams because this is awesome we've got the salt lake bull moose look out the provo trappers gray wolves of northern utah and the salt lake wranglers so depending on where you live you fit into one of those four and then you compete it's it'll be a competition we'll have a champ right a and proper regionally based uh competition think for those of you that are familiar you know we used to call it the mpc it's called the um miter 10 cup is what it's called yes. now in new zealand the provincial level rugby teams where you represent the cities and the towns that you're from not necessarily where you're paid and under contract where were you born and raised that's who you're going to play for so this is a great chance for these guys to play at home with people they've probably known for years and really showcase their talent I wish we did this in football or basketball. It'd be amazing, right? That'd be amazing. Every state competing. That'd be that'd be cool. Delaware would just get destroyed. <laughs> poor um, Delaware. Poor Delaware. Yeah, and and you can uh, you can attend those games and watch it uh, this fall, but you also need to get ready for 2023 because guess what? It's going to be here before you know. It. Season tickets are available now, Dub Nation. You're not going to want to miss out on being there for all the action at Zions Bank Stadium. Call 801-477-7652. Tickets are unbelievably priced right now for Dub Nation fans that want to lock up your seats as well as all of the other action that go along with it, including an invitation to our draft party like we just had. Uh, so many incredible behind-the-scenes looks that you get as a season ticket holder, and it's available now, 801-477-7652. We've had a lot of movement on the roster so far already. More to come in the next weeks. It's going to get exciting as we continue to build up to 2023. Be ready, Dub Nation, and get your season tickets now. If you were a season ticket holder and went to the draft party, you could have seen Joel Hodgson. You, you may not have known who he was hiding in the corner over there. You could have talked to him if you wanted. Yeah, you could have <laughs> talked to Banksy, American superstar. Okay, let's bring in uh, Sai Uhila, competition chairman of, uh, of of this new Crossroads Cup. Sai, welcome into Dub Nation. Good to see you, man. How's it going? Good, good. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, the the, uh, the home decor there is looking strong, by the way. I know you work on it. Did you do this yourself? Tell us uh, what's yeah, going on here. Play around, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome okay so we were just talking about it perhaps you heard it this is this is great the pathway for the utah warriors continues to evolve and now you're the competition chairman over this so what's it been like to help develop this uh you know it's it's pretty amazing um and it's just credit to the organization for you know uh believing the, believing the community and it, this is a way of you know re-ensuring the tie that we have with the community as far as bringing players through uh, through this pathway into the Warriors, you know, which is pretty amazing. Um, it's been a great experience for me trying to connect back with uh, some of the club uh, leaders, 
all over Utah and also uh, Southern Idaho as well. It's been, yeah, it's been a great experience. So who's available to play in this competition? Who can sign up and, uh, and be ready? Because this kicks off here in uh, a little over a month now, right? Yeah, pretty much. So is anybody who feel they have a chance or, you know, feel they have a chance in the MLR, they are welcome to play because we are looking for players. And like I said, what a great opportunity to have, you know, especially for uh, people here at college, BYU, UVU, um, Utah State, to have another chance of, you know, in the, uh, in the, in the MLR. So That's awesome. Okay, how do people sign up if they're interested? Uh, we have a, uh, I think the uh, release that they have today, they have a, a website over there. Just go click on it. There's a phone number you can call, and they kind of assign you to the region which team you uh, should be playing at. But, yeah, it should be pretty easy. So we've seen so many pathway players come through the Warriors organization. Think guys like Danny Christensen, who cut his teeth through the club level. Uh, Masi, of course, who had an amazing rookie season. Um, Joe Mano and so many others. What excites you most about this new competition as you're the competition chairman? You're the, I mean, we call you the chief for a reason. You get to oversee the whole thing. You know, there's nothing exciting than seeing uh, players like, you know, like you said, Joe Mano, Tomasi Tonga and all those kids. And I believe firmly that Utah has a, a great pool of players of youth that they can be in this competition that we, they just haven't had a chance to um to showcase their skills and stuff in, in the competition. And that's why we put together this competition. So hopefully we can uh, gather them and help them as far as coaching and um, and developing these players and have them, uh, give them a chance in the MLR as well. How about that Tomasi Tonga tackle there? I had forgotten about that one. That one was so good. It just lifts the uh, saber cat in the air and just, just pushes them back. Okay, we're seeing some of the highlights of some of the young guys here, which is awesome. Danny Christensen, a guy who came through the – Utah Select. So you've got the Academy. You got the Crossroads Cup, which by the way, go to crossroadscup.com, crossroadscup.com to find that information I just mentioned. Then they can go to the Selects. Now the Selects are going to compete in the same season as the MLR team. So these guys will just slide over if needed. And uh, what kind of difference do you feel that will make where, hey, they're also playing in games, staying in shape and getting ready to go should they be needed on the twenty three. Oh, I think we missed his audio there a little bit. That's all right. Saya, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Awesome. What, it, what does it mean to you and what impact do you anticipate uh, it will have to have the selects competing in the spring with you guys to where if someone needs to slide over to the senior team that, hey, they may have played in the Crossroads Cup or been in the academy. Now they're getting experience in the selects and now they can slide over to the senior team and, and it's all kind of one cohesive unit, it feels like. Yeah, I think it's pretty critical. I mean, for us uh, senior players and stuff, we have to work hard. It's a must for us to work hard now because knowing that there is a pathway, there's people, a cycle of players and stuff coming behind us and stuff like that. So we have to be on our, you know, on our best games day in and day out. Otherwise, you know, your position is not guaranteed. So I think it, I think it's a great setup for us, for the Utah Warriors. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. So speaking of playing at your best and preparing at your best, How's your leg? I know you just underwent a minor procedure on your knee and they actually found something that has been a problem for the last few years that they dug out of there. Tell me about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I just had a little um, this is clean up and whatnot. But uh, yeah, they found some stitches that was just kind of floating around there. So thankfully there was ibuprofen and stuff to live off of throughout the, throughout the season. But uh, hope for the best in this one. So Now you, you say that very humbly. From my understanding, there was stitches and a small piece of gauze that have been in your leg for the last five years. <laughs> right? That's what I heard, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You've been playing major league what? level rugby yeah. with extra bits in your knee. Yes, pretty much. So, <laughs> Not performance enhancing in any way. In fact, probably the opposite. You fought through that. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my you gosh. Hey. Just have to take ibuprofen, 800 milligram in the morning. <laughs> yes. Ibuprofen so. will fix it. It's fine. Sleep it off. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> We're talking to Sai Uhila, Utah Warrior player. Uh, just a, a bruiser. They call him Chief. How many How many more seasons are we doing here, Sai? Because every season we get with you is special every time. 
<laughs> hey, as long as uh, so whatever the body has to keep, man. And yeah, I'm just happy to still have a chance to be out there with the boys and represent the Utah Warriors. You know, there's yeah, there's nothing better than that other than yeah, just just be there for the boys and you know. When you're when you, when you're done, you get to sit back and keep watching this thing grow with you. Yeah. So at least next year. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> at least next season, I'll be there for sure. But yeah. <laughs> Love it. So uh, one more thing before we leave you here. You talk about doing it for the boys and backing up the squad. Lance Williams has been a big part of the heart and soul of this team, and he's been re-signed. What are your thoughts on getting him back? Uh, I'm happy to have him back. I mean, he is, he, Lance is a great player. He's a workhorse in the field, you know, always try to uh, get better every day. And, um, yeah, those those are the players that we need. Um, Lance Williams, hopefully Tomas Suava will uh, see him again next season. We have some great guys and just excited to get back with them. So so who moves more weight in the gym, you or Lance? Uh, I don't know. Depends on the day for me. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how many extra stitches are in that knee. No, Lance, not Lance, definitely. I'm not a, I'm not a weightlifting guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't believe you for one second. Looking at your arms <laughs> right now. Like, like, I, I don't <laughs> want to call you a liar, but Saya, you're a liar. You lift weights. <laughs> Saya, your, your, your shirt is struggling. Mine is loose and no, floppy. No, 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 okay, no. look at, look at the room in my shirt, and look at the room in your shirt, Docs. I think it's the, the camera ankle. Yeah. <laughs> Saya, we appreciate the time, man. We're excited about uh, the Crossroads Cup and, uh, of course, an at least another season with you next year. It's going to be awesome, man. Thanks for the time. Thank you very much. Talking to Saya Uhila, who claims he doesn't lift weights, which is just not true. Uh, that dude is jacked. We appreciate him joining us. Don't let him flee. He's, he's pushing his arms up in that picture. He's making his biceps look bigger like that. He doesn't even need to. It just it just sticks it out, and it's uh, the size of my thigh. I mean, this is crazy. Okay, so crossroadscup.com for more information. Crossroadscup.com. We can't wait to see some of the young talent in uh, Utah and Southern Idaho participate in this. This will be great. Okay, our next piece of information in hiring uh, slash signing. Ian Gibbons is the new high-performance director with the Utah Warriors. You talk about experience, Banksy. He's been with the Saracens and Scarlets in the UK with the Kenya Men's Sevens, USA women's sevens, Japan women's sevens in the Olympics, with the Seawolves when they won in 2019 the MLR title, with the Legion, with Collegiate Rugby Shield. We saw him around this summer. This is a uh, fantastic uh, new addition as the high-performance director in Ian Gibbons. This is an absolutely elite-level signing for the organization and from a front office perspective. When you get a guy that has this much experience – as well as the the attitude and culture that he brings with the accountability, the the fun, the the cooperation among the different offices that he's going to be able to bring to the Utah Warriors. This is a fantastic addition if you're a, a Dub Nation fan. Good stuff. Welcome to Ian Gibbons, one of the newest Utah Warriors members on the staff there. Okay, make sure to follow us on social media, uh, Facebook and, and Twitter and YouTube and Instagram and whatnot. Last but not least, uh, the Rugby World Cup Sevens. Uh, okay, so the U.S. women took fourth. It was a good showing. Australia took first. Uh, USA men took 11th. Not as good. Uh, Fiji won. Uh, this was held in South Africa. Your thoughts on how the USA performed? Uh, I think underwhelming really is kind of the expectation there from the USA Sevens. I think they were, you know, really hoping to be in the top five. Uh, was Was probably a realistic goal for them in this tournament. And just... The whole season, I think they've really struggled post-COVID to kind of find that chemistry that they had in, in previous tournaments and in previous years where we've even seen them win events on the World Rugby Tour. So yeah. uh, I really think the standard was set higher, and I think they believe that it was set higher and kind of underperformed in that particular situation for the for the boys. I couldn't believe it had been four years since San Francisco already. I was like, what? It's been four years? Maybe it was you gotta three. You got to divide that in half. It's COVID standard time, so – you get to you Great. get to add the extra on there for the two and a half years that we basically sat around and twiddled our thumbs and watched highlights. Yeah. And for the women, though, I mean, a fourth place is is pretty respectable in that particular situation from the women. I know they definitely had their sights set on uh, probably a top two, maybe even top three there with Australia and New Zealand. The quality of that women's uh, team is at that level. So. Uh, a top five finish, still very respectable and something that they should absolutely be proud of. 
Notably, we wish the best of luck to the USA 15s uh, with Warriors Paula CK coming off that broken hand. It's getting healthy. Paul Mullen, Angus McClellan, they're in camp with the United States as we speak. And uh, November 6th through the 18th, remember, that's the qualifying tournament in Dubai for the final spot uh, in the Rugby World Cup in France next year. Hong Kong, Kenya, Portugal, and the U.S. in that. <sighs> Got to make it. And so uh, good luck to our guys, the two tight head props who uh, played against Chile, and hopefully the USA gets it done. They've had multiple chances against uh, Uruguay and Chile, and now... Got to get it done in this tournament in November. Look, this is a put up or shut up situation. You win the bid to host the World Cup here now. You've got to qualify in this last chance tournament. So desperation times, and hopefully that adds to the urgency that these guys are able to play with. But a really stacked squad for the Eagles and uh, really looking to probably be the favorites coming out of that tournament. And it'll be interesting what kind of squad you get, like, I assume A.J. McGinty is going to leave and go play in this because this is huge, right, uh, from the premiership in uh, England and, and everybody else, right? MLR not going, but some of those international guys in other leagues come over. So that's a bit uh, – uh, that's huge. That's huge. Well, we thought this was going to be the Crossroads Cup show. It certainly was. But it was Among much more than things. that as well. So much news, which, by the way, the Utah Warriors, instead of waiting to announce all the signings, they're announcing the signings as they go, which is very exciting. And we will bring those to you and try and talk to those people as much as possible throughout the offseason and, of course, when we get going in February. And if you don't want to miss them as they happen, make sure you catch all of the social media, all right? Because these are real-time signings. When they hit Instagram, when they hit Facebook, when they hit Twitter, this is as they're happening as we can confirm these. So make sure you follow the Utah Warriors wherever you are on social media, as well as wherever you get your podcasts. You can catch the Dub Nation show. We'll give you all of the details as they happen, but you can you can catch the breaking news as it happens on social media. This is like a regular season show. We went 43 minutes and counting right now. My Stacked. Goodness. Wow. We got a lot going on. We got to get paid extra for this in the offseason. Jeez. You get paid for this? Wait, what? This internship has been awesome. I get, I get hoodies and hats. That's what they're paying me in. <laughs> they're paying got, me in kit. <laughs> I got this Kirkland water bottle. I mean, I'm it in was, it for it the love great. of the game, yo. It was, it was great. Okay, that'll do it for us. Like and share this episode of Dub Nation and follow the Utah Wars on, on social media. For Joel Hodgson from the Midlands in the UK, Saya Uhila from the Midlands of Utah, Mason Benson and Banksy, I'm Jerem Jordan. Go Warriors!